session of our lecture series. And I would like to invite our former uh, section committee chair, uh, okay. engineer Mrs. Kamala Gunavardhana, to do the uh, welcome. Yeah. Over to okay. you, madam. Yeah, good evening. Thank you, Inji Vanduka. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this lecture, lecture series actually, especially for today's lecture. Yes, it's the seventh lecture on the session for this session and the continuation from the previous lecture. I'm correct, no, Vanduka? Yes, yeah. yes, madam, correct. It's a continuation from the last lecture. So let me welcome our esteemed professor, Professor Tishan Jai Singh, for this lecture today and all the participants who are joining here for this lecture. Uh, if I tell you a little bit about what professor have done so far, many of you may have been joined with us in the previous two sessions. Uh, also, professor conducted like in 21, 22. Uh, for, you did more than 20 lectures uh, on high-rise building using your records. And in 22, 23, you completed about 17 lectures, including one physical, which was really remarkable for us. And that also under highway bridges and structures using your report. So deviation from that, what I see is now. And participants, you are very much, very much fortunate this time to join these lectures on uh, structural designs of uh, cost effective lightweight hybrid ones, multi-story buildings using your records. Uh, so it's uh, it's actually what I feel is very much uh, great opportunity. Also, I understood that professor is giving knowledge on value engineering. Highlighted that if you give opportunities to QA, QA QC engineers and to optimize the structural, structural designs uh, with that, with that input. Thank you, Professor, for your great contribution towards the membership of the ISL. And I would say it's a unique, you're a unique person, unique resource person who is doing this so far, and I appreciate it. On behalf of the German Civil Engineer Sectional Committee Engineer Mangal Silva, once again, I welcome everyone to the lecture and hope you will fill up your baskets with uh, some important stuff from this lecture as well, right? Without further ado, I invite Professor Tishan Jai Singh to take over the platform. Thank you. Right. So last time we talked about uh, double reinforced beams. And then uh, I showed you, you know, in W reinforced beams, uh, we get a lot of uh, reinforcement in compression zone that is not economical. But if you have a flange, large flange, then we can make it economical. So we talked about uh, flange beams. And I showed you how to design a flange beam and uh, why, how we uh, decide the depth to the uh, compression zone. And we have to make sure the compression zone is inside the flange. Uh, can you remember those? Yes, yes, sir. Right. So basically, what I said was uh, if you have a huge moment, a moment greater than given by 0.167 uh, FCK BD square, if the moment is greater than that, the depth to the neutral axis is 0.45 D and we will need some reinforcement to carry the moment and we will have a moment M1 greater than M max. M1 minus M max is the extra moment and it has to be carried by the compression reinforcement is dash F Y K divided by 1.15 multiplied by D minus D dash. So this says force multiplied by lever arm. Multiplied by lever arm. So today is uh, 18, sorry, 
twenty twenty four civil engineering sectional committee lecture series lecture seven and page one. So we need extra reinforcement, and this is D minus V dash. And that reinforcement can be find found A dash M one minus M max divided by point eight seven Y K D minus V dash. So straight away you can find the extra reinforcement needed for the beam to be doubly reinforced. Because the moment exceeds the maximum moment capacity as single end. Then I said, okay, this is not economical. Why? Concrete is a cheaper material, steel is an expensive material, so we should not use steel, steel to carry many moment. So what is better? Plant B. But the important thing is S or depth to the compression zone must be inside. Height of the plant. Is that clear, Bandhuga? Yes, that is clear. Now the question. We have a continuous beam. So this is a continuous beam. So how does it deform? Deforms like this. So here, tension in the bottom, tension at the top, tension in the bottom, tension at the top, tension in the bottom. So here, if it is branch beam, here you have tension. So what is effective is only this. Here, tension is here. What is effective is this. That means it's a branch beam. In the span flange beam over the support, rectangular beam. Is that clear, Vanduga? Yes, that is clear, sir. Okay, excellent. Now we have a, let's look at the scenario. These are beams. So you get this as L1, L2, and so on. <clears throat> Sorry, B1, B2. We say B1, B2. Right. So this is a plan view. And uh, the slabs are like this. Then we have the supports. And these supports are the same as these ones. These are supports. So the beam is continuing like this. So these are L1, L2, L3. Now, what happens is, we have an effect for shear lag. And shear lag makes plane sections not plane. Plane sections not plane. What do you mean by that? What is the meaning of that? You have learned this formula. What is that formula? The famous Burnley equation. We generally call it Burnley formula. And here, what is the assumption? Plane sections remain plane. Plane diagram like this. 
but what happens is this bending somewhere here if you if you if you draw the stress distribution in the flange it will take a shape like this so that means you can't say the stresses are uniform in the flange they are more close to the surface or the beam so we say we have an average value but we have a restricted beam because from center line to center line we can't take it the center line the center line of the slab we can't take center line to center line because on the center line the stresses are very low so we say plane sections do not remain plane away from the beam plane sections do remain plane only at the beam and we call it shear lag have you learned shear lag banduka Shear lag. Shear lag. Anybody who has learned shear lag, please respond. If you haven't learned about shear lag, shear lag will make the plane sections not plane. That means the stresses are not uniform. They are like this. On the flange, they are like this, so we cannot use the full full distance from center line of the slab to the center line of the other slab. We have to have a restriction. So, this in the British code, finding the flange width is very very easy. So as in Eurocode, but Eurocode little little complicated, but there's nothing in it. So what the Eurocode said was, you get L one, L two, L three. They have flange beam here. It will it will be. Web bit B flange, which we call BW plus point seven times L one <coughs> by five. This is L shaped beam. Slab only on one side. B flange is equal to BW plus point seven L one. Divided by ten. Very simple. Now you might ask, what is this point seven nil? You draw a bending moment diagram. Point seven nil is the distance between point of contact flexion. <coughs> Here it should be point eight five times ten. There should be eight point eight five times L. Distance between zero moments is called point seven L. It is equal to point seven L. They have considered it as equal to point seven L. Is that clear, Manduga? I think Bandhu is disconnected. So can somebody tell? Somebody else tell me whether it's clear. Yes, it is can clear. It is clear, clear, sir. Good. Yeah, yes, please sir. give some feedback because uh, <coughs> I'm little concerned whether I'm I have lost the contact. Okay. Right. So when so. I ask a question, just say yes or no. Even that is enough. Right. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir, Bandhu, my connection was lost, and I just doing. Yeah, I it. thought I thought your connection is lost. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, sir. Right. So now, British Eurocode is different. Eurocode has brought lot of other parameters. In Eurocode. Bf depends on Bw, 
as a function of b bi and as a function of li in british code it's a function of span of the b <coughs> but in euro code it's a function of the distance between the beams and the distance between the supports so this is distance between beams This distance between supports. Eurocode Euro also gives the same diagram. It cannot change because it's from fundamentals. This is point eight five n. This is point seven n. So each one of these will be point one five n. Yours will be point one five n. He also point one five. He also point one five. Okay, got it. Banduga, right. It looks like Banduga has again lost. Right. That's now. I am going to share the screen. It gives a lot of diagrams, right? So effective flange, width of flanges, all limit states. Can you see point eight five L, point seven L, point eight five, point one five L, or the support? And these are a cantilever. The effect to uh, the length has to be taken as point one five L two plus L three. So, so it says point two times B one plus point one five L naught, but should be less than point two times L naught. So B effective from one side. So what it says is. If I write it in simple rule, B flange is equal to B width, B web plus twenty percent of distance, twenty percent of span of the slab <coughs> plus ten percent of distance between. Point of contraction. So, for, for an example, let's say we are having a beam going like this, and these are four meters. Let's say five meters. This span is. Seven meters. The typical situation. This span is again seven meters. Or let's say in, internal span is eight meters. So what is the plan with from this side? With the plan B. What is this side? Uh, say, excuse sir, we couldn't see uh, see the notes, sir. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, I'm gonna. Yes. Sorry, 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 sorry. It's good that you told me. Right. So the the so the rule is B F is equal B W plus twenty percent of span of the slab, twenty percent of distance between point of contact. So what is this side? So B F left. I'll say left is equal to. 
ట్వంటీ పర్సెంట్ ట్వంటీ పర్సెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఫైవ్ మీటర్స్ ట్వంటీ పర్సెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఫైవ్ ప్లస్ టెన్ పర్సెంట్ ఆఫ్ డిస్టెన్స్ మీన్ పాయింట్ ఆఫ్ కంట్రాప్లెక్షన్ పాయింట్ సెవెన్ టైమ్స్ సెవెన్ టైమ్స్ బట్ హ్యాస్ టు బీ లెస్ దాన్ ట్వంటీ పర్సెంట్ ఆఫ్ పాయింట్ సెవెన్ టైమ్స్ so let's calculate what do what is this 1 by not plus 0.49 should be less than 0.98 is that right bandhu yes so what is covered in there this 20% of ruling uh, governing is it right man no 20% of 1 is 1 20% of 5 is 1 0.7 into 7 is 4.9 10% of 4.9 is 0.49 and 20% of 0.49 is uh, 20% of uh, that is uh, 0.98 so 1.49 should be less than 0.98 so which is governing 0.98 is governing so the width of the flange beam is so this 300 mm rib so this side 0.98 this side 0.98 so 9998 so 1.96 2.26 meters రూల్స్ see this card diagram lot of things so we have a diagram we have a lot of equations and then this diagram but uh, the meaning is simple so what would you use the rule like this or the code uh, to me this rule is very simple so we know 20% comes from the slab 10% comes from the beam what do you think is it e easy to remember or do you will remember but the total contribution cannot be cannot exceed 20% of the beam that's on one side so other side also most of the time they are symmetrical so you can just add up the same value what is the opinion this simple rule is simple or you want to look at the code i prefer the simple rule simple rule is easy sir yeah because you know the, now if you are a good designer you should have all these rules in the code in your brain code properly so you don't have to turn you know turn to pages in the code and waste your time right you are a good designer all the rules are known to you so even without using the code you can still design that's the level of ability you have to develop so i prefer rules why rule will allow us to forget about the equation okay okay sir right so now let's say this this slab subjected to a load of 13 kN per meter square what is this magic number 13 1.35 gk plus 1.5 qk now how do i get this magic number for a house what is the magic number 8 to 9 
for an office building. What is the magic number? 11 to 12. For a, if you have extra loads in the office, it can be 12 to 13. Fuel supplies 3% of the energy worldwide. Where is the 14? Right, so now let's look at the example. Same example. Uh, what is the load? Load is 13 kilonewtons per meter squared multiplied by uh, WL squared or 10. Uh, 7 squared divided by 10. What is the moment like? 13 into... Uh, Bandhu, what is this answer? 13 multiplied by 7 squared divided by 10. 8.1, sir. Thirteen uh, thirteen multiplied by seven squared divided by uh, one minute, sir. One minute. Two hundred something. Seven squared divided by four, um, four. ten ten. Double yeah. square dot ten. Okay, sir. Uh, oh, but, but, but multiply it by five. Multiply it by five. Yeah. Uh, 5 into 30 multiplied by 7 squared divided by 10. Come 200 something. 318.5. Yeah, 18.5 kilo newton meter. Now let's say that is the moment in the span. So we have flange beam. What is the flange width? 2.26 meters. We calculated it earlier. Can you remember I calculated it? Yes. 2.26 meters. Okay? Yes, I calculated. Yes, yeah. Right? Yes, sir. Now, uh, you want to design this flange B. And uh, I will assume that uh, so how do I design it? I have to find MOBD square. I am using the shortcut method. No? 318.5 into 10 to the power 6 divided by breadth 2260 multiplied by now this is 600 millimeter deep. This 600 is a magic number. You generally don't use a beam depth more than 600 under normal situations. Even up to 9 meters, you will increase the width of the beam and be happy. And D, generally you don't get spans more than 9 meters in a reinforced concrete building. Maximum span is 9 meters. Because you know, beyond 10 meters, the design is also very complicated. It has additional deflections and all kinds of problems. So generally we go for a maximum span of 9 meters when you are selecting the grid because 9 meters itself is about, it is huge. It's 30 feet span. So depth is 545. What is the value? What is the answer? Forty eight. Uh, Forty eight point no. one. Sorry. Final forty five strat Maybe 2.1 or something like that. The answer should be around uh, 1.8, something like that. So, uh, it's coming. 1.2, point, something. 0.47. Like. 0.47. Ah, 0.47, that's right. Yeah. Then, uh, what is 100 days of BD? Divide this by 4. 0 0.12. Okay? Yes, yes. Then what is A? A is 0 0.12 multiplied by breadth 2260 multiplied by 545 divided by 100. What is A? Wow, 1478. Point zero five. Four numbers. 
three numbers of twenty-five diameter. Three numbers of twenty-five diameter. Or you can write two numbers of twenty-five h twenty-five. Two numbers of h twenty. So that is three hundred fourteen into two. This four hundred ninety into two. What is the total area? One thousand six hundred and eight. When we need one thousand one hundred seventy eight, is that clear? Yes, clear. Sir. Now, if I select this one, one hundred ninety into three. One thousand one hundred seventy. Marginal low. Now, why do I select? I if you want, I can select this also because if I do a proper calculation, this will be okay because I use slightly higher point one two instead of something. So one thousand one hundred seventy is also okay. But I select one thousand six hundred eight. Why? Why? Because I always provide slightly more reinforcement in the span section. What is the reason? Beams never fail at the support. Beam fails only at the span. So in the span, no harm in providing some extra reinforcement. Is that clear, Vandu? Yes, clear, sir. That's the reason. So now we have to make sure S is less than H F. So I say area of reinforcement. Force in concrete is equal to force in steel. So what is the force in concrete? Point five eight seven F Y K multiplied by breadth two thousand two hundred sixty multiplied by S is equal to point eight seven F Y K multiplied by one thousand one hundred seventy eight is the area. From this, I can calculate this because F Y K is thirty. If if uh, Y K if Y uh, if Y if Y is five hundred, this five hundred, this thirty. What is the only unknown? Only unknown is S. Then you can find the value of S. You might get about forty millimeters. What is the value for S, Manuka? Right, sir. You might get about four millimeters. Sixteen point one five millimeters. Hmm. Sixteen. Sixteen point one five. Sixteen point one five. Uh, point eight seven into five hundred into one thousand and four hundred seventy eight divided by point five eight seven into thirty into two thousand two hundred and sixty. Sixty yes. This is very low. Huh? Sixty point one five. 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 Doesn't matter. What what the requirement is? It has to be less than it. Yes. Right. Okay, so now you provide this reinforcement. Will it ever fail? It will never fail, provided that you have you have you have you include some reinforcement here across the beam, so that uh, no shear failure can occur here. So uh, I have not covered here to teach you how to find this reinforcement, but uh, for the time being, we'll say uh, we are going to provide some top reinforcement anyway. And then uh, when you are providing the bottom reinforcement, what do you do? My, de my detailing is I continue this reinforcement here. I continue this reinforcement here. 
So this full lap here and that will also provide some extra resistance for shear cracking. So I will provide top reinforcement and bottom reinforcement, but top reinforcement is continuous, bottom reinforcement has a joint, but the joint is done properly so that uh, there's plenty of reinforcement across the uh, flange to make sure the flange never fails. Is that clear, Bandhu? Yes, that is clear, sir. So I will not just provide, uh, you know, to the middle, but I provide to the very end on the beam. Mm -hmm. Right? And if you make a small bend also, that is even better, then, then it has better. And uh, then the flange will never ever fail. So we'll have a super strong D. Is that clear? Yes, that is clear. So I have covered flange beams, W reinforced beams, single reinforced beams. So beams are over, I think. Is that right? Yes, correct, sir. And also, I explain moment redistribution. So, everything on beams have been completed. And uh, we can start here today. Okay, sir. Right. So, I will actually uh, talk a little bit about torsion also. Now, shear can be many different types. Because, uh, I mean, Engineers generally don't have much idea about torsion. So it's better to tell something about torsion also when you talk about shear. Then we have a beam. We load it. So we are applying the load here. Where are we resisting? Here. So, we must have shear. And always flexure is come associated with shear. But there is another type of shear. Let's say we have a beam, we have a slab here. Slab is cantilevering from this one. And beam is like this. Connected, it's continuous. Slab is only here. What happens? When you load the slab, what do you get? Moment like this. And what is the axis of the moment? Axis of the moment is like that. Along the beam. Any moment where the axis of the beam, axis of the moment is along the beam, stroke or torsion. Now, where can torsion happen in a in a beam? Let's say we have a transfer beam. 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter beam. And where is the axis of the beam? Here. Center. And we have a wall here. The load from the wall is coming here. Why are we using transfer beams of 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter beam? Because we are supporting few flows. Or a wall supporting few flows on the transfer beam. So there is a massive load. Maybe about 2000 kilo newtons. Um, distance. These 0.75 meters. This is 200 millimeter thick wall. So this is 0.65. So 2000 kilo newtons into 0.65. What is that? 130 kilo newton meters. So what can I say about the beam? It's a massive beam. 1.5 meters by 1.5 meters. Still it's subjected to torsion. We call this equilibrium torsion. Why? If you do not try torsion or reinforcement, beam fails. 
do not try torsion or reinforcement b phase why because uh, this can create a massive torsion and stress if the torsion and stresses are too high you get diagonal cracks forming right around the beam and the beam can fail we must make sure beam would not fail like that so how many shear forces one is direct shear the other one is torsional shear two types of shear forces can act on a section and we must make sure both are resistant but when you do uh, perform structure analysis by using a 3d program you get bending moments on the beams you get shear forces on the beam direct shear but you hardly get any torsion moments why because we are applying most of the loads on the, on the axis of the beam. we don't apply loads uh, away from the axis of the beam so you don't get torsion so you don't have to provide a design for torsion you don't have to provide extra reinforcement for torsion but minute amount of torsion can be there which can be easily resisted by concrete is that clear yes that is clear sir so i'll show you a knot i'll show a knot okay torsion in beams mm -hmm. and this is a extract from book Reinforced concrete designed to Euro codes by Bart, Magilia, and Chu. Very good book, but don't read it immediately unless you are familiar with Euro codes. The first book to read is not this one. What is the first book to read? The reinforced concrete design book by Musli and Manj. Read that first. Then, if you are when you are familiar with the subject, you can read this one. It's an advanced book. Very good, excellent book. But if you try to, if you read it for the first time, what will happen? You will give up. Reinforced concrete design. So this is very complicated book, right? So don't read this for the first time. First read the book by Musli and Bandi. Once you understand reinforced concrete well enough, you can read this one because it covers a lot of advanced technology. So this note is based on that. So here, what do you get? Equilibrium torsion. What do you get here? The two interconnected beams, and it is compatibility torsion. Now, when you connect two beams like this, even if you don't try torsion and reinforcement, it will never ever fail. So it's called equilibrium compatibility torsion. But if you don't provide torsion and reinforcement, the it will fail. It's called equilibrium torsion. And this this theory is used very much when you are analyzing M beams and Y beam bridges. We say they are torsionless systems. The reason is what you get in a M beam or a Y beam is a compatibility torsion, which can be taken into account by having a higher bending moment. Uh, anticipated on normal calculations. So we provide. Uh, uh, so what we do is uh, we simply uh, in uh, beams uh, of Y beams or uh, M beams in a bridge, we say we are going to have compatibility torsion, and we say the torsion are constant is zero. The moment you say torsion are constant is zero, you get higher bending moment. You get a higher bending moment in the beams, and you design for the higher bending moment, higher shear forces, and finally you find, though you are not specifically designed for torsion, you are okay. You are okay. So these are methods that we use in bridges a lot, and uh, so the torsion shear stress in a concrete section is like this. And if you have a open section like this, the torsion and shear stresses are given by this equation. 
so those are not very important for you just to understand so what you do is uh, when you have a rectangular section also according to euro code we consider it is a hollow section it is a hollow section and we do the calculations these are this diagram is directly from the euro code and then when you are designing for euro code you can see the type of diagrams you have to see and the type of equations you have to fulfill very difficult to remember all these recall all these so what do you do very simple what we do is all the theories are given lot of equations what are you going to do look at the example given by uh, magilli in uh, for to design for torsion so the example is included the moment you look at the equation example you will understand how to deal with torsion and deal with deal with deal with it in that way so torsion is not a major problem you can see there's a there's an example and uh, so in the example how to do the calculations are given so what you have to do is go through the example try to understand the method given in euro code because if you want to if you try to understand this you will never understand it what is this this is a code mandu can you understand this kind of complicated stuff what do you think mandu do you like all this no, complicated no, diagrams and equations now sir it's very difficult to understand yeah it's it's, it's it's a killer you don't you don't you don't do it then what do you do forget about all that so just go through it just to understand what are the provisions so all these are provisions and then go through the example so go through the example then you will understand it's not that that difficult right so is the equation we... example or yeah uh, i have directly... given equation yes sir if we directly go to the example and then yeah, it yeah, will be easy the example no no just just look at the code before hmm. Just, just yeah. glance through it. Not, you don't have to understand, but you, you should, you should make your eye used to it. And after that, go to the example. But in the example okay. also, I have given the code extracts. The extract, the equations are given. I, I have modified the example. I have taken things from the example, put things in between from the code, so that you will understand what you are doing, right? And then, so that is that's all. So you can put it on the computer. You can write a spreadsheet for this. Otherwise, you know, doing a torsion calculation is a killer. I mean, very difficult if you try to direct use the code. Why? Code covers all possible scenarios. But when you are designing a beam for torsion, it's not a big deal. So, so what you do is you will uh, go through the example and put it on a spreadsheet. So, whenever you see a moment, you put it to feed the moment with the dimensions. Then the rest will can be calculated. Got it? Yes, got it. See, lot of calculations, lot of lot of theories, a lot of proof, lot of things. So I have put everything inside so that you know when you are doing the calculations, when you are using the equations, you will understand why you are doing it. So whatever relevant is in the note, right? How how the, how those the equations are derived? Everything is in the code. Uh, from the code, I have given the information. It's very easy. You can you have to just go through the exam. Right, so I think we have shared this note, Bandhu. Yes, that that, uh, that is uh, in our Google Drive. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so please go access. through the note. It's a it's a very easy to understand note. Not so, not a difficult thing. It has a example. Just go through the example. and within the example also i have included, i have shown the relevant equations so so you can easily follow it right in the textbook the theory is at one place example is at a different place what i have done is i have put all together so that you can understand the theory and the example all in one go so uh, thank that you is sir. It's a very very valuable document sir it's yeah yeah so please go through it because you know very difficult to teach these things these are the things engineers should read and understand okay but uh, a very good document is available for you to understand it's better than the textbook now right so go through this note and
try and understand how do you do torsion, but you have to understand torsion comes only where? Transfer beams. If you are designing a transfer beams of a 30-story building or a 20-story building, you have a transfer flow, then you must be very careful. You must be very careful in modeling. I'll later day I'll show you how to do the modeling, right? And then uh, how to do the modeling to get the torsion and moments? I can show it now itself. Just give me a small time. Now you can see structural design of tall buildings. Can it be? Uh, can it be rule based? Can I you can see, see the title? Can it be rule based? Can you remember I told you rules? Yes. So what I say is, you know, you don't need code. If I, if you ask me to design a third-story building, Banduka, I will yes. ask you to keep all the codes with you. I say I don't want codes. You keep the codes, and within one week, I I don't have a code, but still I can give the whole design in one week with a challenge. What is the challenge? <laughs> if you find a single mistake in my design, I'll give you. 10% of the design fee. And if you find two mistakes, 20%. If you find 10 mistakes, I don't get anything, you get everything. Right? And then I'll say, if you optimize my design by 10%, I'll give you 10%. If you optimize my design by 20%, I'll give you 20% of the fee. Right? One question, sir. Okay. Uh, uh... So how to uh, improve ourselves for that uh, to do that those level. designs? No, yes. no, you have to read. You have to read. Read the books and uh -huh. read the books early in the morning and see how the equations are derived. And then uh, you have to see what is the rule relevant. You you make your own rules. So I have made my own rules, so I don't need codes. I can do all the calculations without having a code. Because all the input that technical data is uh, I have stored in the brain. So I can do all the calculations without looking at the code. Got it? Got it, got it, sir. Thank you. Yeah, so, so that has to be, you know, you have to work hard on it. But it's worth, why? You go for a, you go for a presentation or you go for an interview or you, you are at the site, you are you, you can simply run the show. Right. Yes, so sir. this this presentation I, I have given, no? Uh -huh. This is a presentation I did in uh, Diva Pool University uh, on twenty uh, seventh February two thousand nineteen before we got COVID. Uh, uh -huh. you know, one year before we I we got COVID, I was you know, we were in Diva Pool University as visiting academics. And I did a presentation and the students were, could not believe what they heard. When I told them, I'm, I can design without codes. I use my own rules. They could not believe. But they have never heard a person who says, I don't want codes. I, everything in the code is in my brain. Nobody has ever told them that. So you can see Altair. See, 43 flows without a support. 43 floors of inclined building without supports. I've seen this before. 43 floors, no connection. In the actual building, there's a connection, but they, up to now, there's no connection. 43 story building com completed, inclined. Right. So I have actually checked it, uh, whether it can be okay. So we had a model where we did not have, we had only up to this player. So these are the, you know, pre-stress concrete balconies of uh, clear point. Another, another landmark will you. One minute, can Yeah? One line Right. Right. So today what happened was, uh, Actually, I lost the post uh, because of due to some unstable connection. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now I, I can't you. control the uh, <laughs> members. <laughs> right, okay.
now banduk yes sir now we are going to come into a very important thing uh so can you see some of these uh, walls starting on the edge of the beam yes we can, can we can see that sir yeah so that's where you get torsion so you can see how i have done it so here this is the center line can you see a small arm here ha huh? You can see a small arm, right? So you okay. can see the small arm. Can you see here also? You can see the arm. So yes, arm sir, we can see those arms. Arm. It's called a strong arm. Strong arm is a big section. It's used as an arm so that we can place the shear wall at the correct location. Wall is at the correct location, not not on the beam. So when you do the modeling that way, you can see that. Ah, that key was there. I am not here. So can you see here all these walls? All these walls. Can you see they are they are not on the center line. They are not on the center line. And how do you get them not on the center line? So uh, this extruded view, you, you know, you see it on not on the center line, but it's no problem. But it, on the model, it, there's a problem. The problem is solved by having strong elements strong elements uh, or strong uh, arms or rigid arms connected to the beam a rigid arm is here here you can see some places there will be rigid arms right sir, so uh, here can you can be, see rigid arms. Uh, can you be explain it again sir uh, how it was no, uh, now now you have a wall okay sir in the upper part of the building it is not coinciding with the center line of the transfer beam yes sir it's on the edge of the transfer beam yes now now in modeling what is the dimension of a center the of a beam it's a center it's a line only it has no dimension in the model yes sir but in the actual structure it has a dimension mm -hmm. so what you are modeling is the center line What you are modeling is the center line. Is that right? Yes. So correct. when you say beam, beam, you place the beam on the center line, but you avoid the wall. It is not on the center line. So yes. we need a member to connect those two, and uh -huh. those are called rigid arms. Ah, it's a, a rigid arm like a very large section, very large section, rigidly connected to the beam on the center line. Okay, sir. Got so it. So we we have used uh, rigid links to. Uh, model that uh, action. It's not a rigid beam. It's a rigid arm. Okay. It's like arm, arm, arm. Something projecting out. That's why you call it arm. Arm is projecting out from the shoulder. It's like arm, right? Okay, sir. Rigid arm. Why you call it rigid? It has a big section. Got it? Okay, clear, sir. It has a big section. You call it rigid. We call it arm by because it's projecting out from the center line. So we call it a rigid arm. When you put a rigid arm, you can put the wall in the correct location, actual location. Got it? Got it, sir. So when you when you extrude and see, you don't you don't see it. You you see the walls in the actual location. Can you see edge of the beam? Yes, sir. In But in the model, uh, it is not the edge of the beam. It's, we have deliberately created the location at the edge of the beam. Deliberately. Otherwise, it will appear on the center line. Then it's wrong. You know, when you when you analyze, you don't get a torsion moment. When you put anything on the center line, you don't get a torsion moment when you analyze. If you want any torsion moments, there are torsion moments, actual moments. If you want to find the magnitude, you must put the Members at the correct locations. Then only the torsion moments will be generated. Is that clear? Clear, sir. In this extruded view, our rigid arm and the beam extruded uh, parts are coinciding. Is that correct? Coinciding, so you can't see it. Actually. Okay, sir. Right. But uh, extruded view will clearly show you that they are not on the same line. 
Yes, sir. That's the important thing. Right? So these are trick. Very valuable trick for designers. So you can see uh, this is something I have shown you earlier. This is another important thing. Can you see the piles? Yes, uh, we can see them. And the pile cap? Yes. Uh, what is this building? This is a building at Nugegod for Porsche, close to uh, what you call Valley, Valley Park. Uh, on the open university road from Nugegod, supermarket junction. On the open university road, uh, there's a road connecting to Pagan Road. And uh, just after that, you get this, this building on the left hand side. It's a 14 story building. So you can clearly see, I mean, we have model uh, foundations, piles, foundations, uh, columns, beams, transfer plates, transfer beams, the walls above, everything in one go. Very advanced modeling. Using what? SAP 2000. Simple program, but very complicated model has been made. Is that clear? Yes. Yes. So, do you have ability to create a model like this? If you don't have, don't worry, I'm going to show you later. I have the license for SAP 2000, so I'll show you how to use uh, uh, SAP 2000 to create a model like this. And that's where the money lies. Because if your ability to create a model like this will make sure you are eligible for big payments. And the other important thing, you can see uh, the transfer beam is coming and connecting here. You will find the bending moment on the column is much higher here than here. So what will happen? Where will you get the highest reinforcement in the column? At the bottom or at the top? Just below the transfer level, you might find the reinforcement needed in the column is much higher than the reinforcement needed at the bottom of the column. Have you ever have you ever heard something like that? The reinforcement needed at the just below the transfer plate or transfer beams is much higher than the reinforcement needed at the bottom of the column. Have you ever heard something like that? No, sir. But it can happen. Why? Here the moment dominates. Here the axial force dominates. Columns are very good in carrying axial force. They may not be very good in carrying bending moments. So you will have axial force domination here. Here what you get is uh, bending moment domination. So when the bending moment is dominating, you might get a situation where the reinforcement requirement is higher. Got it? Yes. Yes. So you have to be very, very much concerned about all these different aspects. Though that's why I thought I should touch on torsion. Otherwise, every course will touch on shear, but not touch on torsion. But now you can see torsion is a very important aspect that the engineer should master. But finding the once you find the torsion and moment, finding the torsion and reinforcement is not a big deal. You just uh, look at that example and put everything onto a spreadsheet. So you feed the numbers in, you will get the answers out. Is that clear, Vandu? Yes, that is clear, sir. Yeah. So dealing with torsion is not a big problem. What is the problem then? Creating a model where you will find the torsion and moment. To create a model in such a way that the torsion moment is given by the model is a challenge. So that you have to Take head on, and uh, here in this example, I have done it. Done that. So, this is a very useful uh, presentation to uh, go through. Have you got a copy of this presentation, Mandugan? Uh, sir, uh, uh, until now, we haven't shared this one with our group. Maybe I might so be having this. Sir. Okay, sir. Thank you.
pre-share it because that will be useful for all the because it covers a lot of ground on uh, every aspect is covered including uh, DEF that we covered earlier. So yes. you better share it. And this is Monarch. Prescott Monarch. Here you can see the translate because the building was originally completed only up to four floors. Later they added some 22 or 23 floors and uh, originally meant for an apartment building. Later it became taller. Sorry, originally has an office building. Later it became an apartment building uh, that needed strengthening of the columns and so on. Already cast columns. So this is a rather landmark building where again uh, I did a lot of uh, work uh, where this uh, upper part had so many shear walls, the transplate was solid, so I made it a cellular transplate that uh, helped them to uh, a lot to uh, the the company was building their own come on building and they were losing a lot of money because the design had too much reinforcement and. Uh, we had to make it lightweight, so I did it uh, with a model. And uh, this is uh, this is cinnamon red. Okay, the translate is at the tenth floor. Level. Just imagine casting one point five meter thick slab at the tenth floor level. It's a huge task. So what I did was I made it all a cellular translate, where most of the material unwanted was removed. And uh, I made it a beam slab structure, but uh, I put a slab at the bottom, slab at the top. So it became a cellular structure, a hollow structure. And that way, we save a lot of reinforcement, a lot of uh, money, a lot of concrete. And uh, we made it robust. The load on the foundations were removed, reduced. And finally, the upper part also, also optimized a lot. Uh, resulting in a huge saving for the uh, owning company, which is Sunken, uh, Sunken Lang. So they are they are they are the owners of the building, but the management is Cinnamon. So that's why we call it Cinnamon Red Hotel, but owned by Sunken Group. So that's another uh, very important project that we did. And did the infinity pool at the top of the building on the twenty sixth floor. You get the infinity pool. You can see almost a lot of nice sceneries of uh, Colombo, including sunrise uh, with, you know, behind Sri Pada early in the morning. Very nice scenery. So there's a lot of information that is useful and how to model the foundations using springs and uh, yeah, so a lot of useful information. And with that, shall we wind up so we can start the proper shear, the fractional shear design next time? Bandu? Okay, sir. There are a few questions. Uh, yeah. What are the questions, please? Yeah. Um, uh, what is the first question? Link, no problem. Okay. Please don't interrupt the session, mute your mics. Uh, the connectable walls and frames have to be weightless. Yes, they have to be weightless because they are additional members. They have to be weightless. Rigid links to support the eccentric walls. What property modifiers should be used? So basically, either you can use a small beam, multiply the I by 1000. On the other hand, you can use a big beam. And you, if you are using a big beam, you don't have to multiply anything. So uh, one good thing maybe use a light plate, uh, rigid arm, and uh, multiply the I value by thousand. Second, by go to set modifiers and multiply the I value by thousand. When modeling rigid links to support eccentric pores, what property modifiers? Yeah, what property modifiers are needed only if you are using a small section. Otherwise, if you are using a large section, uh, no property modifiers. Vanduga, have I answered all section all all, all yeah. questions? Uh, one, one more question, sir. Uh, yeah. Actually, two. Uh, one is uh, what are the detailing rules for torsion? How torsional reinforcement should be provided? Ah, so the don't worry, don't worry. That is given in the example. Yeah, right? that document. Yes. Yeah, so just go through the document. Uh, the example gives all the torsional things uh, requirement and how to do provide it. Um, it's a 
it's a it's a calculation on its own so just go through it right i will also explain it one day but but i don't thought that you know because we are these are advanced course uh, no harm in giving some information early right but one day i will uh, take time and explain it don't worry but uh, in the meantime you can go through and uh, learn because that's the best way to learn i mean i can teach but you will forget but whatever you learn you will never forget now you can see i i have spent my time i'm teaching am i looking at anything no i can teach so that's the same way you know if you if you read the documents if you read mostly and banji if you read mcinley you read uh, many other books look at examples try to learn one day you will be a top expert nobody can ever come closer to you but do all that early in the morning why early in the morning there's a very special feature in your body what is that your stomach is empty brain is ready to accept data because already you have slept 7 hours you have slept minimum 6 hours preferably 7 hours your brain has rested very well and also the most important thing is your stomach is empty so don't eat anything before you start working have a glass of water and start work then your stomach is empty no no sleepiness the blood the brain cells are supplied with lot of glucose from the body from the heart in blood stream you get you supply lot of glucose and then what happens and then you give a order to the brain i want you to remember all the things i do today because this is an important thing i am doing what the brain will do yes brain will say yes i am ready and brain will store all the information that you are asking the brain to store and you will find any day even after 10 years still you can recall the information you are order the brain to store because if you don't order brain will forget if you order the brain to store the information brain will store the information once it is stored very hard to miss it you will you can recall it over and over and over again if you are going to use it once in a while you don't have to use it every day because brain is a very powerful tool and it's uh, more powerful than artificial intelligence much more powerful only thing is we don't use our brain that way the day you start using the brain the way i have told you you will find that you can even do better than what i do so that's a power so i have used the brain power because i want every day i get up 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the morning and i use the brain very well and uh, what i do is if i feel sleepy i sleep day time but i don't sleep night time i sleep night sleep 4 hours 5 hours get up work and if there's a short fall i sleep day time but uh, i make sure the time where the brain is most powerful i use it and when the brain is lazy i sleep so there is a different way of thinking and we do all know i always think differently and uh, you can see i have used the brain also very differently when most of the people are working i sleep so i sleep early i get up early 2 o'clock in the morning no problem i will start working and i might sleep day time because if i need if i feel sleep i sleep because why don't don't work when you are sleepy that's why chinese people after lunch they sleep one hour why because after lunch where the blood supply blood supply is to the stomach not to the brain so if you work immediately after your lunch your efficiency is very low so don't work sleep and after that japanese also do that i think so that's why their efficiencies are very high extremely high so they they make sure they work at the time their brain is at the best and they sleep when the brain is not working in sri lanka our students work in the night when the brain is very tired they sleep until 8 o'clock when the brain is best 
they have slept that's why you know our productivity is so low and that's why we are we are not doing well as a nation so you are understand it okay bandhu yes thank you very much sir and uh, yeah one last question was there yeah. uh, is it needed to consider torsion at the locations of staircase connected and ah yeah the, those 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 uh, examples i'll show you i'll okay, i'll sir. teach right don't worry because in there whenever there's a opening uh, you must design that beam for torsion and uh, you if you look at uh, the book by allen the bs8110 book by allen uh, you can understand torsion very well that's a very good book the the book written by allen on uh, for bs8110 the worked examples there allen has given a very very good uh, explanation for torsion allen's book so read allen's book first then that's a that's a best place to start and then you can read uh, my note and then uh, example then mostly and be a manji example the examples given in uh, magilly likewise you have to go, go for complete stuff don't go for complete stuff at the beginning the the expression okay. given in allen is the best if you can find allen's book can read it the uh, copies are very very now library so if you want you can uh, scan it and uh, share it that particular exam explanation nobody is okay. using it because it's written for bs8110 but nobody is using it now but uh, allen's uh, copy of allen's book is available in our library university of maroto library if you can get hold of somebody who can make a copy uh make a photo make take a photo and uh, share it it's only two pages yeah thank you very much very good okay sir okay <coughs> okay sir uh we find up and next week we will uh, discuss uh, the shear yeah next week shear right yeah okay let's say it will be shear okay yes we will do the torsion and shear flexural shear torsion ji we will come back to another day because when i show you how to uh, model uh, on sap uh, transfer beam and then that day we can talk about torsion right until such okay. time you can you can do your own studies because the note is there but uh, okay, next time will be flexural shear not nothing else right okay sir only flexural and also, shear and also one request sir uh, can we share that uh, list of uh, references uh, just said uh, so we can uh... Uh, yeah actually uh, banduka the reference is given in the note uh, and there is book. it is in the note okay yeah, it's okay. there it's there and uh, mostly and manji i think you have shared uh, the information it is shared sir okay sir. yeah mostly and manji is the most of the most popular book for reinforced concrete design yes sir everybody yes. must read the whole book okay sir and okay uh, thank you very much uh, uh, sir professor tisan jay singh for uh, conducting this lecture series and we as practicing engineers found uh, the how valuable this lecture series is for us and the questions coming from the participants and those feedbacks are also very positive and they are also uh, taking many advantages from this lecture series so we are very thankful for professor for sharing his expertise and knowledge with us and also i would like to thank uh, the chairman civil engineering section committee uh, engineer mangala silva for uh, conducting continuing this lecture series which was uh, started uh, two years back uh, with different topics so thank you very much sir and also i would like to thank the isa secretariat the publicity department and the it division for their support to conduct this lecture series and uh, we will meet uh, next uh, wednesday 7 pm with uh, the next uh...